How you doing? I'm um, Ken Eggleston, National Sales Manager for Space Pack. I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in for our Space Pack online training. Uh, I did want to touch on, you know, what is, what is Space Pack? What is high velocity? Where does it fit? Um, a, lot, a lot of homes, it, it started with, uh, they have steam heat, no duct work. Uh, and this kind of was the solution to get them AC into their home. You know, stanking uh, the two inch ducts down the walls, through closets, to feed you know the first floor into the second floor, and things like that. Um, as things have changed over the years, we're really fitting into you know really architectural sound homes that really the appearance of it looks. Um, with that two inch outlet, it basically disappears, matches with can lights and things like that. Um, but also, you know, homes, like custom homes, that there's no room for ductwork, or they, they don't want to put things on their wall, that this is the fit for that. Um, and some of these homes now with cathedral ceilings and uh, big spans to kind of throw that air across that room is where space back definitely fits, because basically what we tell people is, if you put an outlet in the room, it will take care of the room. We don't care if it's on the inside wall or the outside wall. It's going to mix that air up to 15 feet within that room. So you should have a, a unified uh, conditioned space. Um, what we do say is, uh, our claim to fame would be like, we keep the whole entire house within two degrees, okay? Very similar to radiant floor heating. It's, a, it's an even cooling, even heat, uh, and it makes it very uh, draft free and, and comfortable for the, the homeowner. So we're going to talk about our ESP J series air handlers. Uh, this one here is our horizontal unit. It's a 2430. Uh, we also have a vertical uh, series of air handlers. Um, this goes in three sizes. So we have our 2430, which is our two two and a half ton unit. We have a 3642, which is our three three and a half ton unit, and our 4860, which is our four five ton unit. Okay. Uh, the J series is our latest series of air handlers. Again, going back to having that. EC motor, your five-speed setup kind of deal. So as I get into this unit, um, I want to touch on a few things. All our refrigerant lines come out the front. It's a 7 8 3 8 connection. So just keep in mind, if you're running like a two-ton unit, you might be doing seven, or excuse me, three-quarter and three eighths, but you will need an adapter to reduce down to that refrigerant line size. Um, getting inside the unit here, I've already kind of loosened these up so I can show you, but um, Come out of here. So, with our coil, it's a six row coil. Uh, what we would say is a dense coil. So, that's how we're removing a lot of that moisture and we're, we're gaining the BTUs at that low CFM is because of the, the thickness of this coil. Um, because we're low on that CFM, we do have our, our frost protection here that kicks in around 34 degrees. And when it does that, so let's say the coil low on airflow hits 34 degrees, it's going to cycle off the condenser until the coil gets back up to about 38 degrees, and then it's going to kick the condenser back on. All right. When it does that, you'll end up with a two flash from this main control port. So you'll see two blinking lights, which means you had an anti-frost. It's not a hard lockout. It's just letting you know that it happened. All right. And if it does happen, you may want to check your airflow settings or possibly um, your refrigerant charge. Okay, so that's what that's for. Um, our Chatlift TXV, all right, is factory installed, um, but also easy to replace if there ever was an issue, okay? But most times I find that there is never an issue with the TXV. It ends up being uh, an airflow thing, and everybody likes to lead it towards this TXV. So always go back to the basics. Let's make sure our airflow is clean, good, before we do anything else, all right? Um, because we remove so much moisture, we, we add a safety feature to this unit, which is our float switch. If our condensate drain was ever to block up, this would be a hard lockout, okay? So if that switch hits, you're going to get a single flash and the unit is off. So being the contractor, expect a call, all right? The homeowner is going to call you and say, hey, my unit's not operating. You get up there, it's a single flash. Check your condensate line, make sure it's cleaned out and then reset the unit and, and it should operate as normal after that, okay? So moving into the control, we have dual controls as I was kind of showing before. We have our speed control here, which is where we adjust our fan motor, and then we have our main board here. And with that main board, these are our inputs, okay? So where our thermostats are going to wire into, R, G, Y1, Y2, W1, W2, okay? 
Um, and then we have our outputs, which are our T terminals. A lot of people think the T means thermostat, and it doesn't. The T is your output to your condenser, your chiller, whatever you are using is what's going to come out of that. And that has the same thing, Y1T, Y2T, W1T, and uh, W2T. The reason to use these outputs is so the safeties work, okay? If you don't use the outputs, it's never going to shut the condenser off, uh, especially on this freeze protection. I've gotten many calls over the years saying, oh, my coil is totally a block of ice, and the only reason for that is it wasn't wired properly as far as the safeties go. Okay, so moving into uh, this side of the P-trap, um, again, this, this unit, it pulls a negative. We got our coil here. We got a blow module up front, all right? So it's actually pulling the air across that coil. If you don't have a P-trap installed properly, the water off this coil can get set down into the ductwork, um, and that's not what we want. So if you get a call saying, hey, I'm getting some moisture in the, the ductwork, my sound attenuator tubes are wet, um, it's because this trap is not installed right. So we give this to you. So we have our male adapter that we want to we want to dope and tape. That's going to get threaded in here. Okay. We can go up to a six inch piece of three quarter inch PVC. So this can go up to about six inches away. We're going to hit our T, and we also give you a clean out with a plug. We got to install the clean out. So I want to make sure at least the slide in one is glued. This is glued. Everything's glued here. And then this one is just a twist out, and that's how you get in there to clean the trap if it ever was the uh, plug. All right, and then your downstream, you'll, you'll just follow your local plumbing code, which is typically you know a quarter inch per foot drop to gravity feed it out of the building, or you can go 90 into a condensate pump and pump it out of the building. So whatever's going to happen there. Um, on the electrical side, I just want to point out that this unit is out of the box 220 volts. Okay but it can be field converted to 120 volts. Um, in this instruction packet, it's going to tell you how to do that. There's a jumper here that has to go in. It actually gets landed um, right here on this terminal that is labeled 115 volt. Only use it if you're going to change it to 115. If you're keeping it at 220, do not use this. Don't wire anything to this because that will burn out your motor. So we want to keep in mind, follow the instructions before you convert this thing over. Uh, I just want to talk about line voltage and low voltage, how it wires into our unit. On the front of the unit, we have a knockout right here. This is where your line voltage would go in. And then we have our terminal strips there, uh, labeled L1, neutral, L2, okay, and a ground. So those are what need to be wired in. And then down here, we have a rubber grommet knockout. That's where our low voltage will come through into, inside the unit. All right, on our units, we've always been known to be able to get our motors out. So if a motor failed, it's easy to get out. These things go into tight areas, it's difficult to get it, get the motor out. So when we moved to this EC motor, it was a, it's a little bit bigger, so we're not able to get it out the side panels anymore like we used to. But what we ended up doing was we built a drawer, basically. So this front end of this unit kind of just pulls right out. So as long as you're following our rules, that 18-inch that rule, you just got to remove that, that piece of plenum, and this whole entire motor will pull out. So there, there's a number of screws that are around the perimeter of this front plate that you basically loosen up, take out, and then this thing will just slide right out. And if we need to replace the whole motor, we're going to put this plate back on the new motor, and we're going to slide it right back in, and then reconnect our jumper from there. So with your space back air handler, you do need a, what we'll call a plenum adapter to transition from the unit to your 9-inch round or your um, 10 by 10 fiberboard is what we also offer. So we have three adapters. This one here is a square to round. It's our smart seal adapter. It has a gasketed fitting in it, and it goes the 9 inch round. But you can see how it's kind of a little bit longer, and then transitions to the round. We've got a nice seal here on this one. Right. This is our uh, another version of our 9 inch round plenum adapter that comes off the front of the unit. This is one you might use if you're using Snaplock as your main plenum. Um, this unit comes with a gasket, so the gasket's going to be put onto the back of this, and it's going to help seal any air leakage. It also comes with screws with it. Okay, so I'm going to peel this off, and I'll put it on. I advise really putting it onto the adapter, not not the unit to start. We want to try to line up these holes. Try this at home. There we go. Then home. All right. So then on this adapter, you'll see that there's some uh, some. Then home. That's because
because these bigger bolts here are where it hold the motor to the face plate. Okay, so they're there no matter what. So we have to have them. All right, so I'm going to line this up for you. So we're pre-drilled holes. We got a hole here. We got a hole there. All right. I advise hitting all four corners first just to make sure you're lined up. Okay. We're going to go over here. The reason you want to get this screw here, if you were to see it, there's a gap. So we're going to make sure we tighten up that gap. important to have this sealed because if it's not sealed, especially in cooling, that condensate is going to find its way out. So you'll, you'll start seeing kind of water build up in front of the unit. So we want to make sure this part is sealed because it's the main thing, getting, getting that air out of the unit. Right. Um, we're going to talk about the hot water coil. So uh, with space pack, we offer three sizes of uh, hot water coil that come out on the back of the unit. For this particular unit, it's a 60,000 BTU coil that's rated at 180 degree water um, and at a certain GPM. Um, there will be a chart that you can look at. Um, we also have a 90,000 BTU coil and a 120,000 BTU coil. And they all match with each size air handler that we deal with. So what I'm going to show you right now is I'm going to take this, this panel off, put this in place, and kind of just show you how easy it is to do. So our screws. Got them on the top, and we also have them on the side. We don't put any screws on the bottom, so it makes it, makes it easier for you to take them off. Alright, so now this back plan just pulls right off. Okay? And we can take our coil. And it's going to mount right up on this flange here like that, and then you put your screws in it. Uh, I'm not going to do that for this purpose, but I do want to show you that this here also will go right on the back of this, and you can screw it back on so you can go back to the space pack return duct. On the coil, the important thing to know is we're, we're going we're gonna to feed our water in, supply from the bottom, return out the top, and the, why we do that is we want the air that's going to raise to the top to be able to get out. So we have a bleeder port right here in the corner. Um, other thing I want to just touch on again would be that auxiliary heat relay that's on this board. That's what's going to drive the hot water to go through this coil. So when we get a heating call, that aux heat relay will close and then it will turn on the boiler and we'll put hot water through the coil. Okay.